Hello again, I am Blunty. Well, I'm Blunty's fresh-faced new anime cat boy virtual avatar, I guess. Should I roleplay? Does this little dude need a name? I don't know, you're welcome to suggest names and character traits in the down below while you're liking and belling this video, by the way. But, do you want to be up and running with your very own virtual avatar for VTubing and whatnot within an hour? Using nothing but free software? Because I made this 3D avatar myself, and I have very little idea about what I'm doing with 3D modeling. I hate the misery factory of Blender with the roiling hot passion of the heart of an active volcano, and I can just about tell you the difference between a spline and a polyline, and yet, here I am in a custom-made avatar crafted from my own mouse hand, and using facial motion capture puppeteering this cute little face. And I did it all from start to finish in less than an hour. I can use this model in VR. I can use it to jump on the VTuber bandwagon, whatever. How? Well, meet VROID Studio. Plus one more secret ingredient I'll tell you about later. We'll come to that. But VROID Studio first. It's something that I've had my eye on in my Steam wishlist for a while now, where it's spent the last year or so in free early access. VROID Studio is, in their very own words, a 3D character creation software developed for you to freely express yourself even without 3D modeling expertise. The software is easy to use. Even first-time users can fully enjoy the software by picking preset items and playing around with the parameter sliders. And you know what? They're not pissing about or blowing smoke up your bum. It is exactly that. It's just what they say it is. It is crazy easy to use, even for 3D modeling noobs, but with a surprisingly powerful underpinning letting experienced users dig pretty deep. Although, if you are a very experienced 3D modeler, you're going to to find this pretty limiting. Obviously, it's not designed for that. Like I said, I've kept an eye on it for quite some time now, but I didn't jump in on its early access stage. I kind of had a sneaky suspicion that the other shoe might drop come full release time, so I waited. And earlier this month, indeed, version 1.0 dropped, rapidly followed by a few bug fix patches, and now we are at 1.0.4, and the other shoe didn't drop. There was no ugly surprise of gross monetization, no cash shop, no nickel and diming microtransactions, no revolting subscription access plan. In fact, the damn thing is still absolutely free. I'm still a little bit weary that there's some kind of abusive business model just waiting to be unleashed once this thing gets a bit of momentum and goodwill behind it, but for now, I guess I'll have to give it the benefit of the doubt. But as you've been seeing behind me here in this B-roll, it's remarkably user-friendly for a 3D modeling app, or any app for that matter, really, in part because it's much more limited than a true 3D modeling app. It mostly revolves around relatively slightly mushing around a few preset meshes for faces and eyes and bodies and clothing options and playing around with a few alternate textures and whatnot. And, and again, when it comes to things like, you know, the cat ears or indeed the clothes, I just can't shake the fear that we'll see a cash shop of this stuff uh, in the future, but for now at least, you can quite easily create a relatively unique and personalized 3D avatar ready for use in a number of different applications. Even its file type is one of the industry standards that's been around for ages, so there's no dickery there. It's a simple VRM file, commonly used in virtual reality applications in development, and isn't all that much different from an XML. It is a plain text file, actually. The application even has cloud-based storage for your models, which makes it easy to use them in a number of different apps, particularly phone-based ones, where you'd not ordinarily have the kind of file system access that you do on a PC. So syncing with the cloud makes that job a lot easier. In short, they've done all this really, really smart and really, really forward thinking. Because it is a standard file format, you can even import these models into more sophisticated editors and modeling programs and use them as a base to further customize them in ways that this program can't. If you've the skill and knowledge, or at least know someone with the skill or knowledge, or know where to hire someone with the skill or knowledge. But now, the other secret source. How am I puppeteering this? Well, it's called VC Face, another free and surprisingly configurable bit of software that's been rumbling around the VTuber spaces for a little while now, and another one that's been on my radar for a little while now, just waiting for an opportunity to test it out. With this, it's a matter of a couple of clicks to import my Vroid model, and I'm up and running basically right away. A little fine tuning and set it as a capture source in OBS, and you're done. 
Now, over the last few years, I've tried to do this kind of thing every once in a while, this virtual avatar thing. I've even done it in VR uh, on live streams and stuff, you know, puppeteering an avatar using a VR headset and VR hand controls and stuff like that. And it's, well, it's, it's never the most comfortable way to do that. And there's been programs around for ages to do it much like I'm doing it now, but they were always kind of unstable or buggy or just crappy to use. They required scummy subscription services or were just so system intensive or laggy, they were just unpleasant to use, if not entirely impractical. Including my most recent experience with something called Animes, which grew out of a, a project that was originally called Face Rig, which is you know, relatively powerful, but it does have some really nasty monetization bullshit going on there. And I was sent a code for this about a month ago to check out and uh, just no, I'm not, I'm not making a video about this. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. The stuff I'm using today is so much better. And with these two bits of free software and maybe a third, any idiot can be an instant 3D VTuber in a day. VC face works with any camera you can feed into your PC. A basic USB webcam will do just fine. Or like in my case, a much fancier camera going into a HDMI capture card. Or as I've been doing for this video, you can feed the program your iPhone's ridiculously clever face tracking data, and it will use that for even more stable and accurate results. Sadly, that's the one big hitch with this. The VROID models don't have very sophisticated facial expression rigging, as you've probably been seeing. So they're a little wooden faced and not even close to the level of detail my iPhone is actually spitting into the program for it to use. And VC Face can actually use that data with an appropriate model. It's just that the VROID models aren't rigged up for that. Hell, you can even do hand tracking with VC Face if you've got the appropriate hardware to do that as well. Now, I am using an iPhone app called iFacial MoCap for this today, which is about 13 bucks Aussie beer money's worth. I also tried a completely free option called Waydeo, which works fine, but is a bit more fiddly and not quite as fancy. Now, there is actually a way to add in the 52 different what's called blend shapes to your VROID model's face to enable a much more natural facial tracking and animation when used in combination with the iPhone face track data. But right now, that's not easy to do, and it's not free to do, and it's pretty clumsy and... Well, if, if you're not very technically minded, you, it can scare you off a bit. So hopefully VROID will update for that sometime and just sort of build that into their program. Or someone will make a simple one-click converter app so you can just slam your file into it and away you go. But for now, even though I'm confident I could do it, I've not dabbled with it myself. As the app I need to do it as part of the multi-stage process is only about 12 Aussie bucks again. But it's on a Japanese site and I need to make an account and then buy it. And then uh, that's just too, too much trouble for my needs right now. Also, I want to have another longer, deeper whack at making an avatar in VROID. This one was, as I said, kind of slapped together in about half an hour, and I'm sure I can do better. Plus, there's a few 3D models I once customized for use in VR chat that I want to see if I can convert to, but that probably means more Blender time, and I hate Blender so very much, so I might be too lazy for that as well. In any case, yeah, up and running with a virtual avatar, virtual customized avatar for VTubing and whatnot within an hour using nothing but free software. This is a whole new bag, kids. Just thought you should know about it if you've ever wanted to give it a go, but were scared off by the old complexities and hoop jumping or even cost in the past. Now is the time to splash in. Splash in? Is that how I'm ending? I don't know. Thanks to the patrons who are scrolling up above, who I would normally point to, but I don't have the hand tracking device thingy that I need to track the hands on this particular avatar that I'm using today. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll just shrug up. To shrug up there. They're, they're up there. Thanks, patrons. I am Blunty, or Blunty's avatar, nameless avatar. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.